Thousands of people gathered at libraries across the country today, including in Brooklyn. The nationwide movement is celebrating public institutions that provides access to books. Fox 5's Michelle Ross shows us how the group is standing up against book bans. A day of action, Brooklyn style. The Brooklyn Public Library is one of 200 different locations across the country hosting rallies and in-person events celebrating the freedom to read as books continue to be banned across the country. We've seen a, an extraordinary amount of banned books uh, that have been proliferating across the United States over the past four years. Some reasons for many of the book bans include unpopular religious views or the material is considered sexually explicit. Nick Higgins is part of the Books Unbanned team who won Librarians of the Year by Library Journal in 2023. We just want to make sure that people in, uh, in communities across America can sort of see themselves reflected in uh, in the books that they hold dear uh, and uh, you know make sure that those books and those stories aren't being hidden from view. The Books Unbanned team created a program for young people in other parts of the country to apply for a library card from the Brooklyn Public Library and get access to more than 5,000 ebooks and audiobooks in the system. The library also handed out many banned books today for free. We were both kind of surprised that these were banned. Um, yeah, we were both really interested in reading them. I mean, especially Atwood and uh, Morrison, yeah. you know? It's, they seem like classic. It's atypical to be banned, to yeah. me. 2023 saw the highest number of book bans ever recorded, with 4,240 unique books targeted for censorship. Student activist Katrina Chen says what got her interested in combating censorship was learning that it's closely related to the First Amendment, a constitutional right. Not enough people care, especially not enough young people care enough. And of course, with the election coming up, it's very important to vote. It's your right. And I think freedom to read is a right, should be treated as such. And the lasting impact of today, the library hopes, is that the younger generation will get involved. If they live in areas where books are banned, they want them to get active and speak up at town halls. And most of all, sign up for a library card. Reporting in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn, Michelle Ross, Fox 5 News. Well, the East Village went to the dogs today in the best possible way. It was for the annual Tompkins Square Halloween Dog Parade. Once again, this year, the parade took a different route and had to be outside Tompkins Square Park, going along Avenue A from 13th to 7th Street. A positively good time, but the beloved tradition is in the midst of some rough times. The popular costume contest where winners are usually crowned did not take place this time. And citing bureaucratic hurdles, the organizer of the parade says he's calling it quits after today. He is looking for someone else to take over. Traffic is already scary, but during Halloween, it's downright terrifying. Up next, how Westchester is handling the influx of visitors who are looking to experience Sleepy Hollow during spooky season. And Audrey Puente is here with a non-spooky forecast. Hey, Audrey. Hi, Arthur. We do have clear skies out there, but that's also helping temperatures take a big drop. We're already down to 49 degrees in Atlantic City. We're at 60 at LaGuardia, 58 over in Central Park, and we do have frost advisors for the county shaded in blue here. I'll talk about the chill for tonight and the warm-up ahead of us coming up. You're watching the 10 o'clock news. It's probably quicker to hitch a ride with a headless horseman than sit in car traffic. That's what some in Westchester are th thinking as they're experiencing a massive influx of visitors looking to experience the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Fox 5's Richard Jacobus finds many residents are over it. <laughs> has been loud with a big crowd in the village of Sleepy Hollow this whole month of October. Thousands upon thousands of ghouls and goblins from western Pennsylvania. The historic aspect of this town was just a huge draw for us. Um, and I think the history of Ichabod Crane, I mean, we literally just watched Sleepy Hollow last night. To Columbia. Yes, the country. All to experience the 150th anniversary of Washington Irving's legend. But it's not just the headless horseman who's been riding through these streets. This year is a record-breaking year for tourists. All because of this viral TikTok video that Sleepy Hollow Mayor Martin Rutya says brought traffic to a head. We had a lot of impact to our residents because people really want to enjoy what we get to see every day. Traffic has been absolutely insane. I go the back roads to try and avoid it as much as possible because it's just 
It's crazy. The massive backup early on in the month was nothing compared to what it was on this frightful night. In fact, most spirits we spoke with say this is what Sleepy Hollow is supposed to be in October. I've been to Salem, but this, Salem didn't have all this, like, this is literally, like, somewhere people live. Yeah. So I think it's really cool that, you know, 365 days a year, it's Halloween. But to keep the witches brew at a simmer, the mayor and village officials came up with a campaign in the hopes that tourists will travel here, not by car, or even by broom. Even the Headless Horseman takes a train in October. <laughs> Sleepy Hollow's population is only about 10,000 people, and on average, in the month of October, this village is seeing about 30,000 per weekend day. But the hay rides and the street fairs will go on as planned. And the best advice? Don't drive. The Headless Horseman won't either. We're in Sleepy Hollow. Richard Jacobus, Fox 5 News. At least the weather's been far from scary as we enter the uh, Halloween season. Andre Puente joins us now. Hey, Cold front's going to come through, I think, late Wednesday night into early Thursday. So that could spark off a couple of morning showers. Our high will be 64 degrees after that. And then we stay in the 60s as we go into the upcoming weekend. So it will feel like fall again for those of you that do want to have the chill around. Arthur, over to you. Well, come. All right. Thanks so much, Audrey. Well, from Audrey, we go to Jennifer Williams, who's here now with a check of what's coming up in sports. Now